All right. Hello, Internet, Gen Con Internet, and everybody in between. We are at Gen Con. My name is Maya. I am the community manager for Secret Hitler and Breaking Games, and I'm here with Pat and Kyle from Mantic Games to talk about the Hellboy board game. Magic and Sparkles. Yes. <laughs> Can you give me like a brief rundown on the game real quick? Hellboy is is a game that was developed from the Hellboy comic book, obviously. We did a Kickstarter for it, so it was kind of a big deal. Uh, we ended up doing over two million, I think, on the solid. Kickstarter. So yeah, it was it was fantastically successful. Very solid. Um, it's the core game is what's out now that we're selling primarily, mm -hmm. which is what we have here with us today. Mm -hmm. It's a game that is going to be based around uh, the four main BPRD agents, which are going to be Hellboy, uh, Liz, Abe, and Johan. Okay. And the BPRD sends you into an unknown creepy crawly dungeon, okay. and you have to take care of something. And it's going to be based on some case files that show you what you have to do. So the case files tell you how to play the game, how to set it up, and what your enemies are going to be, that sort of thing. But you don't know what the boss is. Okay. So it's kind of a mystery on what you're going in for. You just know that there's some scary thing that you got to go take Yeah, care I was going to say, because you said take care of, and I'm like, do yeah, you mean like mafia take care of? Take care of? <laughs> like take, we're taking care we're of? We're going to take them out. Hilarious. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you're, you know, you're dungeon crawling, you're taking care of baddies, everything is going on. So what are, uh, what are uh, some of the distinctions between uh, the different characters that you can play? The characters are unique, so each of them is going to be a little bit better at something that someone else is. Cool. And that's represented on their actual char character cards. So they have four main stats and abilities that are on here, mm -hmm. and they're color-coded. So you'll see on Hellboy's card we actually have a red, yellow, orange, and orange. And those colors correspond to the dice that they use when you're actually rolling and testing on those abilities. Cool. Okay, so what is... Like the order of operations in a turn. You can do anything in any order that you want. Oh my actual bad. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So if Freedom. you need to cooperate and, and help one needs to do something and then Abe needs to do something else, you can absolutely do that. Okay, so this is a co-op game. Yes. yes. Okay. The only limitation is that each character has three activation points that they can use. Okay. You can spend any of those three activation points in any order you want. Right. So I can do something, you can do something, we can go back to B and then we can play again. That's tight. Honestly, I love cooperative games. I feel like when you work together to defeat a goal, it's like, yeah. whew, yes. winning the game is so satisfying. Okay, so you said that these colors would correspond to the dice over there, right? Yeah. So what do what do the dice mean? So the, you have three different colored dice. You have yellow, mm -hmm. which is not so good. Oh no. There's not so many pips on this oh, one. Oh yeah. It's... Orange, which is kind of a medium. Okay. And then red, which is very good. Mm -hmm. You do have a black set of dice, but these are special you can only get when you upgrade your dice. Those look using scary. Your special, they using your scary. insight tokens. They look stuff. terrifying. <laughs> uh, and then you were telling me some cool stuff about the dice earlier. Oh yeah, about? so it, because we uh, realized that these are color coordinated dice, mm -hmm. some people might not, are colorblind, might know the dice they're rolling. Mm -hmm. The pips also coincide to the symbols, the shapes of the, the symbols on their character card. So awesome. the yellows are circles, the orange are squares, and the reds are, are hexes. Okay, I think honestly, I think that's really awesome that you guys have worked towards accessibility for your game. I feel like accessibility in board games is really important right now. Yes. I'm working at Secret Hitler, and we're actually trying to have our next print have Braille for the visual. Yeah, that's version, interesting. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. So what, what's that? Uh, what's the what's the fancy? Uh, this blue dice. This, this yeah, is the that? chaos dice. Oh, you great! You roll this whenever you do every test. There's five good things and one really bad thing. One really bad thing. So, or the skull. Oh, good God! What, so, what are some of the other symbols out there? There's like some. Uh, do you have the thing? Yeah, symbols? you get you get bonus to your to your okay. roll. You might just add one to the actual result. You might okay. add two. You might get to re-roll any number of the dice that you have. What are uh, some examples of the bad things that happen? The bad things are pretty varied, actually. Oh, the, really? the most important thing that you would see is that the highest roll on your die gets taken away. Oh, no. So if you roll a one, two, and a three, that three goes away. Oh. The Yes. Which is pretty bad. That's like also, the depending on the weapon that you use, there can be some other bad things that happen. So right. Say, for example, Hellboy shoots his pistol, mm -hmm. you roll the skull along with it, then all of a sudden he's out of ammo. Oh no. Yeah. So get your stuff together, Hellboy. The game tries to throw difficult situations at you, mm -hmm. and then you have to find ways to sort of bounce back from those difficulties. Yeah, that was gonna be one of my questions, which are what are some typical uh, obstacles that you might face in this game on your way to the big baddie? What are, what are some of the like steps to get there? As you go through and explore the rooms, the cards that you run into inside the rooms are going to tell you how to populate what's in there. Tight. Okay. Sometimes there's good things, sometimes there's bad things. So that's what these encounter yeah. cards are? Yeah, the yes. encounter cards will tell you that. So 
as you enter a room, you'll flip these over, mm -hmm. and it'll actually tell you how to populate the room. So you'll see one, two, three, and four listed there. I see that. The, I the deck good. will tell you how to shuffle these and place them throughout the room. So you don't know what it's going to be. And what's great about that is that every time that you play the game, because you shuffle this, it's going to be a different experience, oh, even if you play the, the same mission again. That's the best. Yeah. All okay, right, and so those are, you were pointing to some little chits over there. Those are the things that you encountered? Yes. Yeah. So these are the clues that you're looking for. Okay. Uh, these are wound markers, and these are fire markers when you light the room. So, so. so in the case of this card here, we have one, two, three, four. You would do one for the first base closest to you, right. two, and then three, and then four. So you just sort of bounce back and forth. Okay. In some rooms where there are four tiles, you would actually populate the whole room. What so. is that? I cannot read that word at all. What's it called? Can you pass me the whole First card? one is clue. Yeah, first one's clue. Second one is scenery. Oh, there's scenery? There's yeah. scenery. Uh, so there's some the cardboard scenery? cutouts that we have. One of Hellboy's special powers is that he can throw scenery. He can throw yeah, scenery? Yeah, he'll pick up a desk and throw it in there. This is like a to. book. Yeah. <laughs> so Hellboy is just like, you got, you can pick up the book screw and you guys. I'm tables. throwing a book at your face. Tables, that? Okay, chairs, cool. I want to play this Fantastic. I would absolutely play this game so I could throw chairs at people. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. All right. Uh, and so are there always four, or is it just like... Always four. Always four. There's four slots. There might be... Depending on what the slot is going to be, yeah. but yeah. there's always like four there things that you encounter. There could be more things in each each of those numbers. Okay. So you might say clue, clue in space one, for I example. See. Yeah. Okay. So what are what are these little doodads? Those are your, your actual activations. Those so are the three. About, you were talking <laughs> yes. about passing them to other people. Yeah, when, when you spend them, you'll say, I'm going to do this one action. And okay. that's how you keep track. It's just an easier way to. So if you were going to have someone else do an action on your turn, would you give them one of those little doodads? No, no. If uh, you were to, we decide that. All right, okay. Hellboy's going to open the door. OK, cool. And then I'm gonna shoot the monster in so he can go to the next guy and Good punch plan. him. So I would spend you would spend your action point. Mm -hmm. Then I'd say, Alright, let's let me do my thing. Okay. I'll spend my action point. Then we go back to you and then you spend your action point. Okay. So that makes uh, sense. You're just limited to the amount of action points that you have. Yeah, right. Okay. There's three every round. Three every round. The basic things that you would do is move, that would okay. cause one of the cubes. Uh, you could shoot. That would be one. That would be fight. That would be one. And in some instances, you know, Hellboy could fight, fight, fight. If he's mm -hmm. really got to take something out, you could fight three we gotta times. Go, we got to fight right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you also would examine. So for the clues, for example, you need to find out what the clue is. So you have to spend an action cube to actually do an examine test. And that's and how you would know if you actually succeed is you would compare that to their stats, like okay. we said before. So the orange for Hellboy on that eyeball, that's his examine test. Okay. So he would roll the three orange dice and always the blue one. Okay, right. So the, the blue one always gives you that wild card. Oh, the chaos dice. Yes. Yeah, that one's really stressful. Okay. Um, so what are some of the advantages that each character has? You said they all have different advantages. Like, what's, yeah. Hel what's Hellboy's advantage? Hellboy just is... Like a tank. Well, he is he is very good at yes. punching things, obviously. That's, that's his thing. Got to throw um, books, got to punch. Got to punch. He's not very good at shooting things. Okay. So that, those are his primary strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. After that, he's he's pretty good at investigating because he has a special rule called seen it all before. Okay. So obviously Hellboy's been around. He uh, has been doing this for quite some time, and right. he is not of this world. So mm -hmm. he has seen a lot of things, and he's sort of got an instinct for it. He so has he gets, seen some things. Yes. yes. So he gets a little bit of an upgrade when he does his exam and tests Basically. as well. Okay. That's something that makes him good. What about uh, our lovely fish man Abe. over here? Abe. Yes. Yeah. So every character do? has unique actions mm -hmm. that cost your action points. Okay. And they have special rules, like you said, with the thing. So Abe basically can do a lot of shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a real good shot, so he can do a precision shot, so he mm -hmm. can shoot past someone. Because uh, when you shoot with someone in the same thing, you have a chance to hit that same person. Yeah. Right. So can he do a lot of like slinking? He can actually. Like he's fish, very fish slippery. Slinking. He can slide, so he can he move can faster slide. than everybody else too. Excellent. So he can move three spaces as opposed to the normal two. And then when he moves through spaces that have enemies in them, he doesn't take any damage. Where he other people, take any right? He literally just sneaks on by. So. I literally just pictured him like rolling down a hill and like bowling down enemies. <laughs> Is that like a thing that you can do? Just like roll down uh, that's, an alley? That's not quite. That's no? Quite. Yeah. Expansion. Expansion. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then who are the other, who are the other two? You didn't mention them? Liz and Johan. Liz and Johan. What's going on with Liz and Johan? Liz likes to light stuff on fire. Excellent. So, so she's a pyrotechnic, I guess they call it. She loves fire. Yeah. So she's got a really fun mechanic where as she goes through the game and takes damage, or even herself, she can stoke the flame. So she can sort of build up her flame abilities and raises on her, and that can be a really powerful attack. So you can awesome. go up to five, where you would just add five to your total on your dice roll, and that could that could knock something out really quick. So but she's not great. the chaos dice? It, the yes. chaos dice would still affect Oh my god, the chaos dice! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
get out of my life, Chaos Dex. I'm like already stressed with the Chaos Dex. The, oh, the yeah. danger with her though is that if you have that number really high yeah. and then she takes damage, and then the it Chaos Dex is like, mm-hmm. yeah, that Chaos Dex too. <gasps> she would blow up though and light the room on fire and cause damage to everybody around her. Okay. So you gotta kind of balance her. Okay, that's okay. And then what's uh, what's going on with Johan? Johan is incredible at investigations. Ooh. Dude is smart. He's smart. So and he's ethereal. Yeah. And he's a theory? Yeah, yeah. That seems unfair. He's got an ability where he doesn't even have to like walk through the rooms. He could literally like teleport to another room and, ex- and investigate over there and then teleport back. So it's kind of fun. That is great. To send him off on his is own. Is he but the only dangerous. one who's able to teleport like that? Yes, but like Liz, he has a, a track marker that he has to try and keep his form because if he takes too much damage, he just collapses into gas. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Not good for him. That's real bad. Okay. So. Uh, so are these skills based on some of the things that they do in the comic? Are, they, like, are these like canon skills? Oh, 100%. Do you, if you play this game, do you have to be a Hellboy fan? Or do you think you can get through it without it? Or do you think, like, if you were a Hellboy fan, would you have an advantage over non If you're a Hellboy fans? fan, I think that you're just going to appreciate it a little bit more. Okay. But you don't need to be a Hellboy fan by any means. Yeah. In fact, I've had friends that I've introduced the game to and we've played with that have now gotten into Hellboy nice. because of the game. That's so, great. yeah. Even if you've just seen the movies, you'll have a nice appreciation for it because mm-hmm. a lot of people have just only seen the movies. Yeah, right, right, right. And so it, it goes hand to hand with the movies also. Okay. So. How, uh, how easy is the game to get into? It's a pretty simple thing to pick up. The cool. demo mission really tells you exactly what you'd need to know. Okay. And it only takes a couple of minutes to get through the demo mission. So it's not too bad to sort of get a grasp on it and start playing. Uh, everyone that we do you know, at game shows and, and booths, they really pick up on it fairly okay. easily. Um, so it's a lot of fun to just do the dive in, crash play, and figure it out, and then you can play one of the more advanced scenarios. Right, right, because you were talking about how you have these different case files for every time. Yes. Can you talk me through like one of the case files? Sure. Would that be like a spoiler? Is that a spoiler? <laughs> a little bit, we'll do the okay. demo. We're gonna do, do okay, okay. Well, we don't wanna spoil the whole internet. So with so the case we'll files, like a team one. they come in a nice little plastic case. So awesome. you literally do not know what is gonna be happening. Awesome. It even tells you, hey, you read this. Awesome. Then once you've read that, you read down to the next one. Mm-hmm. You kind of read through the story, tells like you what's process. going on. You get down to the bottom, tells you how long it is. Okay. Tells you to flip the card at the bottom. Then you go through, tells you how to set it up. I was gonna say, is that the dun- that's like the dungeon or yep. the area set up? I set up everything. Who okay. to play with? What cards to choose? Mm-hmm. Uh, every card has a symbol. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's more than one of that type of card, so every time you do it, you can just kind of take the 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 group of symbols out, randomize the card you need, okay, okay. and do that. And the setup has changed every case file, right? Yes, yes. Cool. It, it'll run the map here once you get the map in again. Very cool. Again here, it says discard, discard after placement of the encounter cards. Mm-hmm. So you set your card to the discard pile. Okay, there's a discard pile over there. You okay. only address one card at a time. Okay. So until yes. you meet the condition of that card, you, you can't don't go, flip You can't move forward, you gotta right. do it first. So okay. it specifically will give you uh, what you have to achieve, and if you don't achieve it in time. Yeah. So it tells you exactly what's going to happen, whether you do or so don't. So you know the stakes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And there are multiple different directions it can go based on whether you succeed or fail on that particular card. So there okay. are multiple outcomes for each mission. Oh my god. Yes. I am like already stressed. <laughs> I'm like literally not even playing the game and I'm already stressed. I just get really scared when it's like, what are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do. You have so many options. Like, i got to play this game. Okay, uh, what, what's another, uh, what's that card? Well, doing? this one right here, this was telling you what, how, how to set this board up. Okay. Yeah, what's that, what's that board? This is, the, uh, this is the insight board. Okay. This tells you who the threat marker is, mm-hmm. the lowest one being who the monsters attack first. Right, okay. This is your insight track. These are the, the clues that you gotta cash in right. to get the insight. Right, okay. And this is the impending doom track. I'm sorry, the impending, the impending doom. doom. Yes. Are you being serious? Yes. That is so terrifying. You got the chaos dice, you got the impending yeah, doom yes. track. Yes. And if you hit the impending doom before you're ready, the bug boss monster comes out. Oh no! Whether you're ready or not, <laughs> whether you're ready or not. he's yeah, just like, well, exactly. what enemies are on the board, what bad things are on the board. He's just We're fighting. attacking you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you want to essentially the whole entire game mechanic is that you want to get as much information on that boss as possible before, before he yeah. comes out. And then you do. Yeah, because it's it's significantly harder if you don't. There, oh yeah, well, of course. And there I are cards and things that you can do in the game that will raise this faster than you yeah. probably want it to. There's well, there's like multiple degrees of impending doom. Yes. This is hilarious, and I love it. <laughs> It, there's That's what's called the Deck, of doom. I, the Deck of the Doom. The Deck of Doom? The Deck of Doom, yes. Okay, wait, where's the Deck of Doom? I, I just want to see the Deck of Doom. <laughs> the Deck of Doom is, did you grab it? I did not look it up. I want to see it. I want to see it like quake in, in fear. In I, want, box, I yeah. want myself to quake in fear as I, as I witness the Deck of Doom. So the Deck of Doom is going to give us um, 
some really bad results, uh -huh. mostly. Uh -huh. Every once in a while, there's a good one in there. But mostly yeah, bad. So mostly bad. I'm living for it. I'm ready. The deck of doom. Yeah. I see you got a lot of minis here. So you guys, Mantic Games, you guys are really good at making games with minis. Uh, so, yes. So that's like we're your primarily main. a miniature uh, manufacturer. Ah, uh, the deck of doom. This is terrifying. I just want the whole internet to know that this is real scary, and I'm stressed. But I'm also very excited. He's like drowning. He's drowning in like an octopus. How do you even? I'm I'm talking not this. You can drown an octopus. All right. What are some of these? Okay. So there's stuff on the back of these. Those are the boss monsters. The boss monsters. monsters. These are nice. Love that finish on the cards. Yeah. Linen finish. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Boss monsters. I'm like I'm doing the spoilers. I'm witnessing the spoilers. <laughs> there you're not. Nice. I'm not gonna show you guys. I can't show you because like everything's different. I don't want to spoil it on the internet. Uh, but these are really cool. The art is really awesome. It looks like it's almost taken like directly we from took the, a comic. Certain the comics. Exactly. Yep. I was gonna say. Uh, uh, Mike McNola is actually right on board with the game. He uh, is actually drawn. If you have the rule book, it. He's actually yeah, drawn cover. the art specifically for the game. I'm gonna put the deck of doom slightly further away sure. from the rest of the cards so that it doesn't create impending doom on the rest of our discussion for today. Um, question: What's that blue thing? Oh, this is just a hole in the floor. Something may, it's just or, a hole. something may or may not come oh, this, out of it. Oh, this is just a casual hole in the floor. Depending depending on what happens with your case files. You can fall into a hole in the floor. Or something could come out. Or something could come out of exactly. the hole in the floor. I love this game. I love all the like suspense. There's so much tension. Yes. And like because all things. the case files are different, you really don't know what's going to exactly. happen. Exactly. Like, they are sealed. Every case is sealed in its own plastic that's bag. That's awesome. So. Wait, so what's going on with some of those minis over there? I These are the like minions. Some, okay. Uh, it, again, when the cards told you how to populate the minions. Right, yes. And then as you, like, if you look at the the encounter card there. The little the Number one. three says minion mm -hmm. A, so you're going to find oh, minion I do see that. A's yeah, over minion here. A, minion A. And that minion A is going to get populated, so we can actually do that. So okay. Let's populate him. Aging. He goes there, and what's the last minion on there? Minion A as well. Yep. We're two the same. He's like ready to smack you. He's got the so, smack down. As you All can right. see with the first encounter, you're right in the right in the face of monsters. Right in the thick of it. Right. Okay, cool. Are there any of them where you're not just immediately in the thick of it? So okay. it depends on oh, the really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There so might just like be some, some clues in a room. Slightly benevolent dude. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, okay. Or frogs. Yeah, I was gonna ask what are those things? What are those well, things? Well frogs, as we know, in in the Bible and everything, frogs are significant uh, signatures of impending doom. Frogs are Sign of bad things. Sign of bad happening. things coming. Oh, so. what happens if I love frogs? Uh, is my life just frog swarms? Okay, that's right. Okay, okay, frog swarms. Sorry, not nope. just one we're frog. We're talking about. We're like talking about. Okay, I was like, what about the cute ones? Okay, not the. Okay. Lots so of in this game, is the more frogs you get, mm -hmm. the faster that tracker just starts going up like crazy. So it behooves you to kill the frog swarms whenever you can. Gotta kill them. How do you kill the frog swarms? They're not actually one of your actions. Yeah, they're not actually enemies. So you have to clear the room of them, and what's important is that you can't get rid of them until the enemies that are in the room with you are already dead. Are already dead. So you have to, if there was a frog swarm in that room with those two dudes, you'd have to kill the two dudes and then the frog swarms. Yep. I've never hated frogs more in my life. So the game tries to essentially make you balance resting and healing and clearing the frog swarms, putting out fires, like all kinds of bad things that can happen. Mm -hmm. So let's say that the, the minions did some damage to you and you wanted to try to heal that back. You could do that, but then there's what's called a rest phase. Mm -hmm. So in the rest phase, you have the option to possibly, you know, heal up some damage yeah, and, and feel up. a little bit better, put okay. out the fires, get rid of the frog swarms. But if you do that, you automatically tick up this counter, the doom counter, by one. Yeah. So you have to say, is it worth it for us to try to make this boss come out quicker and heal up a little bit? Or do we want to take the risk of keeping going? I don't know. I honestly, I honestly don't know. I'll have to play the game and find out. The, the wound mechanic is actually pretty cool. Because oh, yeah, they, they have different spaces here down at the bottom of the card. Mm -hmm. And that's how many they have. So Hellboy's got a little bit more life than yeah, anybody does. Oh, these are health? This is health? Yeah, those are health cubes. So okay. you take one of these, and these are sorted randomly. You want to keep them face down with the uh, blood dripping marker, essentially. Love the blood. And every time they would take a point of damage, you place that on their card. Okay. Once it fills up, they're not actually down and out, knocked out, dead yet. Okay. Okay. You would then flip the cards that have been placed. Okay. I was going to say, you said yeah. upset. You said face down. So as you flip <coughs> these, you'll see a symbol and a minus next to it. Is that what that is? The minus? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is. Okay. So these symbols match their ability symbols at the top. I was going to ask that. Yeah. And they start taking negative modifiers to these abilities. What's this? What's, what is that? That one's a shoot. Shoot. 
Yeah. So oh, Hellboy, it's like a it's like a crosshair. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hellboy has the yellow dice for his shoot action, which okay. we said were pretty bad. It's He's ones bad at and shooting. blanks. Not good. If we actually flip that one on him, mm -hmm. and there's only three of these, normally you would downgrade, but since the yellow is as low as you can go, you would actually take one of these away. <gasps> so it gets worse and worse and worse. Oh, what are you gonna do, Hellboy? Yeah. If it was his orange, for example, you would downgrade on his defense mm -hmm. one of the oranges down to a yellow. Oh, what are you gonna do, Hellboy? Oh, I feel like it's like, stay tuned next week to yes. see if Hellboy <laughs> shoots himself in the face. All right, uh, cool. Uh, so this game seems pretty neat. I like that there are a lot of varying degrees of play because you don't know what's going on in the game file. What is something that makes this game stand out in the crowd of other games out there right now? Uh, honestly, I think it's the unknown of the game itself. Nice. Because the case files are sealed, uh, they're stacked in a way that you can't read them. I mean, you can read them if you want to be. Like, I mean, if, if you, you want to be one of those. If guys. you want to be a party ruiner, yeah, of you course you can read guys. them. Yeah. Okay. If you're one of those who always reads the last chapter of the book first. Are there legit people like that? Yes. Okay. All of you they suck. Just... If you're watching this stream and you do that, you suck. All right, continue. Uh, and then it just walks you through. So, you, like you said, you have that. Oh, what's it's ten I'm tense. Oh, no. what's like, you know, there's a hole in the floor. Why is there a hole in the floor? I don't know why there's a hole in the floor. Did he punch the hole in the yes. floor? Yes, you know, what's going to happen when we keep the door open? Because we don't know what's on those cards. Yeah, is this, are these like little doors? Is that what yes. these are? Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, Man. and then, um, I don't want to say it because I don't want to give it. <laughs> no, don't give too much away. No, I don't give too the much away. The best part about this game is that there's so many things you can discover yes. when you play it. And then, Definitely so, don't give too much away. You don't know what's going to happen next until you, until you flip do the it. card over. You know, and even some bold letters. Do not flip this card over to yeah, this, this is the back door. Like they just want you to know. Yes. Yeah. We gotta experience this journey together. So I think that's a, a real unique. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> element like the element aspect, the element yeah. aspect of the game. Yeah. We we actually ran some demos at C2E2 oh, cool. earlier this year. Pat that's and I crazy. I didn't see all this. And uh, yeah. we had you know. Full, full games, literally the bigger missions with four full players right. and they're playing. Right. And we ran three games each night and all played the exact same scenario and every single game turned out different. What? So, it was, it was, yeah, it was great so there's, a, there's a very good replayability even after you open the case files and play yeah. through it. That's really cool. Yeah, because like there's so many modular. different tracks away you go. Yeah. And it's the like counter cards really and the deck like of doom. Right. That's cool. It changes. So I briefly to ask you guys before because you guys make a lot of minis. Yes. What are what are some other games you guys make that have minis? The biggest would probably be Kings of War. Kings of War. That's our mass battle fantasy game. Okay. And so the minis too. Yeah, awesome. yeah, tons and tons of stuff. Awesome. Um, Kings of War. There's also the sci-fi version of those games, which is Warpath and Dead Zone. Awesome, I love sci-fi. Um, yeah, it's it's a skirmish game. Dead Zone is, which is based on cubes, which are kind of similar to this. Oh really? Uh, it's an eight by eight map, which is kind of nice. Um, there's also uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Okay. Which yeah, is a Walking Dead comic. Obviously, pretty big with comic fans. So we've got two elements where we've got the war gamers who collect, you know, tons and tons of miniatures right. over a really long period of time. Painting them with the tiny brushes. Yes. We also have the, the skirmish and you know smaller scale games right. as well. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, do you guys focus on more like really long commitment style games, or do you also have like some quick casual games too? Or do yeah, you got we, all over? Yeah, we we uh, span the gambit. Of That's that cool. with yeah, the it's... board game of Hellboy. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's Negan is a short, nice, uh, forty-five minute board game that we cool. uh, in the Walking Dead universe, okay. all the way up to the King's War, which is a giant, you know, anywhere from two hours to nice. yeah, three hours. Yeah, so you guys were like an every kind of gamer company. Yes. You got something for everybody. We even got something for role players. With the, even got something for role players. Ooh, what is it? What is it? With our terrain crate. Yeah. What is that? Terrain crate. It's. Uh, Tell me about that. No, oh, put this over there. Oh, it's a biggin. We'll swap. Yes. This is a biggin. All right, we're talking about Terrain Crate so now. So Terrain Crate. Terrain Crate by Mantic Games. A couple of Gen Cons ago, me and the owner were walking through the dealer hall, mm -hmm. and we noticed that there was a lot of dungeon stuff, mm -hmm. but not a lot of stuff that you could put in the dungeons. So what's the point of empty dungeons? Yeah, so then we decided, well, why don't we make stuff for inside dungeons, because mm -hmm. we already make stuff for our board games with, with tables and chairs and everything. And so we, came, we started making a, oh, a line yeah. of... So like if you just things. play D and D, you can just get this. Yes. D and D players, they can use this. You know, it's a huge help oh. for them because it it all the stuff is designed to fit right within their grid maps right. that they you it's know one bring out. Right. Built for one inch squares. Yeah. This so is neat. if you're looking for just some scattered terrain to put in a war game, if you're looking at for um, D and D and role playing games and things like that, we have mm -hmm. a bunch of different themed boxes and kits. This one is a GM's dungeon starter kit, so it's so a dungeon fantasy. 
uh, themed kit. It's got some heroes. It's got some enemies. Um, there's a big dragon in there. Yeah. Is this like a pile of gold? Yeah, yeah. piles of gold and treasure you can use. Any bushes? There is a kit that has fences and bushes and yeah. Yeah, yeah so if you, uh, we have a, a whole town kit. Mm -hmm. So it comes with a blacksmith. I'm like a market. shrubbery fan. I'm big on the okay, shrubbery. So. Like I'm the person who would spend like 20 minutes on The Sims being like, nice. I need to make sure that all my grass is looking like this. So like, like, I would love. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would love to have like a shrubbery kit for my D and D group. Yeah, That's really fences cool. Fences and bushes. It's, yeah. uh, we have that. I mean. You get a ton of stuff to start your DNA campaign. You're gonna get the, the, uh, figures, enemies, oh, heroes, cool. and a dragon. Is this a spooky doors. mirror? Yeah, yeah. spooky I'm mirror. I'm a fan of the spooky mirror. Yep. You know, we excellent. Ha we have a wizard study that, that can come right now. Yeah. That's cool. So they specifically go to all of our games. You know, the door set, if you wanted to get the, the try and create doors, they would go great with the Hellboy kit because okay, right. instead of using these cardboard pieces, you could upgrade it to actual doors and it just, you know, adds Thanks. a little bit more immersion to it. Uh, what are, back to Hellboy, what are some of your future plans for the game? Are you working on any expansions or any like new character release or like what's going on? Uh, to the best of your ability that you're able to tell. <laughs> Obviously don't like right. ruin everything. But like if you're coming up with some cool stuff, what is it? At Gen Con here we actually just released uh, the first expansion that was separate from the Kickstarter. Mm. So it was, it's Hellboy the Wild Hunt. And it's uh, what's, that, what's that about? It, it's just an entire take on that story arc within okay. the comics. Okay. So. You've got access to new it's Hellboy models. Slightly um, touched in the the last, the latest movie, The Wild Hunt. Was, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I did see that. Yes. So the other day, the David Harbour one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have, uh, we had a special uh, for Nimbus. Uh, <laughs> Where did it go? It, yeah, it, it was went, all it went the really quick. Oh no! Yeah, it, well, it, that's good. No. Oh yes. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Cool. So that's that's pretty much all you've got. For here, you're just going to be releasing this? The, the Kickstarter had two expansions that were built into it. Right, okay. So if you didn't pick up on the Kickstarter version, the expansions that are part of that are going to be released, you know, coming up soon. So. Okay. And we do have some Kickstarter kits, that, some here overprints at Gen, Gen, yeah, at Gen, Gen Con. Con. Mm -hmm. So if oh, you awesome. wanted to get in, you'll get the two expansions there, the Conquer Worm yeah. and the BPRD archives come built into the Kickstarter. Definitely want to check that out. Set. And uh, a lot of these cardboard pieces have been upgraded to uh, plastic or resin pieces in the Kickstarter kits. Nice. And for people watching who don't know, what uh, is your booth number? I should ask that. 835. 835. So you're going to go on over to 835, play some Hellboy stuff? Yep. Maybe we're fall into we're a showing, hole? We're showing people Maybe look at some booth. shrubbery? We had such a demand for Hellboy demos yesterday that we actually had to open up another demo table today. Are you so serious? That, yeah. yeah. So that, that is rad. Yeah. I'm probably going to be one of those people. I want to play. Seems cool. All right. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the internet about how cool you guys are? I had a lot of fun talking about Hellboy. Yeah. I'm definitely going to get a box of shrubbery, and I'm pretty, pretty excited yeah. about. I mean, just come by the booth, play some Hellboy if you're interested. Uh, again, if you because uh, a lot of people still don't know about Terrain Crate in the D and D world. Oh, I'm going to talk about this a lot. Yeah, come by. All my nerd friends. We have yeah. all learn about types terrain. of terrain. We we even just released are uh, releasing a new sets coming. When does it come? Yeah, early next year. Early next um, year. That's going to cover goth, modern, sci-fi. Spooky so, terrain. Yes. Yes. Haunted Mansion. Yes. Haunted Mansion graveyard. That's what I want. So if you want to do a Dracula castle, I want that. You, we're going to have I just that want terrain. to do like a Dracula closet. Yes. Like, ooh, you thought, here's a vampire. Exactly. There's some awesome. interesting stuff like uh, there's a mall that is like a mall. Like an old apartment building. Yeah. 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 There's some interesting stuff like uh, there's a mall. Actually, there's like a mall? A, like a post-apocalyptic, like abandoned mall space. Ah, like, like a paper girl. Yeah. Okay, that's really rad. Okay. Well, I'm excited for all those things. Uh, and thank you for joining us today well, thank you and talking us. about your red game and your red shrubbery. Uh, and I think that we're done. <laughs>